I remember being inebriated heavily in the halls of Valhalla and slipping, falling through the floor, through the clouds, and I awoke with my face in a cow patty that a man pulled me from. This man was marveled that I fell from the sky and decided he would take me to his house to make sure that I could regain my strength. Spending a fortnight there, he realized that I was the gatekeeper of history itself and decided he would make a monologue of everything that had happened in the past as the truth as it had stood from the gods themselves. And this is one of many stories which will be chained together from the monologues, the real truth of the history of days past. Oh, can I have one of those, man? Of course, sir. Help yourself. <laughs> Chain smoking was the gift of the gods. <laughs> Zeus knew it. And his brothers and sisters kept the secret from modern man. They told him smoking was not allowed. That's why they started nicotine campaigns. And the Hardy brothers. You do know they should get playing. And it. It's rolling. Oh. And on another day of the Thank Hardy you. brothers. Flights of conquest. Days for the old days. <laughs> Grand dissolution. Grand, I tell you. Another day of the boogeyman. Another day of the heap. And what did we get from it? Sweat. Blood and bad labor. The Illuminati controlled with a tight clenched fist. It was almost as bad as aristocracies from Russian empires. And yet, our savior, lo and behold, was haagen -Dazs. <laughs> The brothers of the German, Germanic Eastern Front Right fighting against the Nazis. The Nazis had music, <laughs> but the Hagen and the Dawes, <laughs> they had ice cream. <laughs> Equally as powerful as music for mind control and manipulations. Mind you, don't interrupt. This is the best and the worst of the years of the Nazi regime. <laughs> Secluded amongst brethren of the court it travels. From the Vikings themselves, people had thought that they had long gone. The Nazis enslaved them. They placed them upon daddy and thought that the cakes were well good indeed as well. <laughs> but what were to become of the Vikings was a troubling matter. Why was there trifle? Why were there Vikings? <laughs> it was inconclusive. But the Hagen and the Doss masterminded a scheme. If the Irish had grown immune to the control of whiskey, what else was there? <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> it's how methamphetamines were completely distributed throughout the entire Nazi regime, yet single-handedly the Hagen and the Doss underground flailing their arms in ice cream goo <laughs> decided one day they will conquer with the lusciousness of ice and pink milk and flavors which the world had not yet illusioned <laughs> to manifest itself on this earth. <laughs> Don't interrupt me, I'm telling. I tell you true, I tell you true. Is there another day that we can find? Archibald Weathers knew. <laughs> Confounded, we never found him. He ate so much hagen -Dazs. He went on vacation and we just never found him again. <laughs> it was almost as bad as David Bowie. <laughs> Aluminum clothing and all. <laughs> Yet, he was a savior who came along with these events. 
But we cannot dig as far back as the Greek disillusionment of the Zeus, Perseus, <laughs> Hermanes, Hermaphrodites, <laughs> and other aristocratically convened individuals. <laughs> All the aristocrats are real. I've seen them with my own eyes. They don't let anybody in. You couldn't pay high enough a penny to be able to let in on the aristocratic movements. <laughs> they allow no one. It is challenge, and challenge indeed. They strike fury with their greed and their pointed fangs of vodka. They ransack the land. And they take everybody prisoner in their booze known as the Jack and the Daniels. <laughs> Merriment in this wildered ideals, the greatest of unicorns, <laughs> leapt forth from the breast <laughs> of the sycamore tree. It was a grand day. It was a day of hot dogs, New York Yankees, and Chester Cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the Chester. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me, we continue. Of course, the Chester of the Cheetahs. He was a bad man. Anybody who wears their sunglasses at night is a bad man. <laughs> Established this since the 80s with a song. Yet the Chester and the Cheetah prevailed along with the Yankees and the hot dog. <laughs> Kosher as it was, born abreast from those who call themselves the Hebrew. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've known of new islands. Well, the Hebrew themselves slay pigs a matter and cook and do not eat. <laughs> Bill Gates bought this island personally for them, building upon it the Microsoft home for those particular pleasures for those days when the Hebrew journey to this island to cook but do not eat. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Continuing. Well, brethren, I tell you true. <laughs> This is how the turn of events came to where nicotine was known as the fruit of the gods. <laughs> Piled upon staves and straps. <laughs> they pulled together nicotine as if it were a giant heap of gold. <laughs> Commoners were not allowed to partake, but yet they burned. They burned until their eyes were saturated and then they learned it was the wrong type. It was the whack of tobacco. <laughs> and thus Loki was born. <laughs> he was an ordinary man. Archibald with his new. <laughs> he stood too close to the fire. Inhaled too much of the essence <laughs> of the under gods. <laughs> thus we saw better days. Arise after they slathered honey all over Loki himself and thrust him into a sycamore tree, banding him with his own shoelaces and letting beasts of the forests eat and thrive. It was the golden day, the golden age. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, a man learned of the secrets of the gods. And J.P. Morgan rose beyond any man known today. <laughs> the first to partake of the fruit of the gods, the tobacco of the land, the gold, the heap. <laughs> He started splicing it together. He smoked. Years upon end, he smoked. 
J.P. Morgan grew ever more powerful in his days until he decided to distribute. There became another day where they had to find ways to restrain him. <laughs> <laughs> Though he was Hindu, he tried to eat his own cattle. <laughs> and it was a beguiling sight. <laughs> Men in Tibet cried out. People in China went back to the monasteries. And Kim Jong-il went ever more insane. Watching too many Looney Tunes episodes, he watched Bugs Bunny eat the carrots and decided that's all he would eat. <laughs> it wasn't good. <laughs> thus the beginning of Kim Jong-il's insanity. <laughs> attributed the idea. They allowed him to eat until he became so full of the carrot himself. He imagined himself a bunny. <laughs> the most dangerous of bunnies. A madman with nuclear missiles. Of course he was. But what would he do with all his carrots when he was gone? <laughs> this is where our story ventures back to Archibald Withers. <laughs> <laughs> Archibald Withers, fantastic man, marveled in the appearance of Archibald Withers. He cast himself, downtrodden, <laughs> ran before the sect, found himself bleeding within the greatness of the confounderies of the Catholic Church, wandered into the valley <laughs> of the northern of Korea's. <laughs> Found the secret stakehold. <laughs> Bound all of the carrots in the stock world <laughs> together with grapevines. <laughs> I remember this as though it were yesterday. <laughs> Upon his flanderings within the stock keep. <laughs> carrots, <laughs> binding them together, running further than any man has run before. He <laughs> swam the ocean and found himself in Japan, <laughs> latching them to a rocket, firing them at Russia. He turned <laughs> Russia as mad as the king himself. <laughs> and this secret lay before you, sir. <laughs> Why Moscow never sleeps. <laughs> Did I tell you the story? <laughs> of a man. <laughs> it was a story of the cloud people. And they rustled amongst themselves. And one day, they grew in might and power. They believed <laughs> so much in this power that they had succumbed to their own glories. <laughs> they cast themselves down. And they found themselves head to head with the head honcho himself. <laughs> Andre the Giant was his name. <laughs> the masterful magician of the arts, of the wrestling and the cow. Of course, he was a mysterious man himself. Some believed him to be one of the druid folk. <laughs> and some believed him to be one of the ever forgotten, but still true, ice people. <laughs> This is because Ragnarok is still yet to come. <laughs> but that is another story for another hour. But it also involves Archibald Winners, the man of the hour.
this talk in the hair. Fiddle faddle is an interesting thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's in it? People don't know. <laughs> the Illuminati knows. They created it. <laughs> Purposely. Unbeknown to all individuals. <laughs> was created as the first habilitizing <laughs> way to ingest perfumes. <laughs> the gloriousness of everything mixed into one kettle. Nobody realized that the sugary greatness that they were eating was actually honey and the fat of whales. <laughs> and so they ingested the gooey sweetness. Gaining ever more sweet scents. <laughs> running amongst the lounge. Philandering as they were. <laughs> this was too much. Ronald well, Reagan had to put an end to all of this. <laughs> and because of his end, <laughs> he named his downfall of what we know as Fiddle Fettle, as also known as Reagan. The first realized ideology that came from the ideas of the Howl Monkey. It was a glorious day. Vespucci was in his garden growing peanuts. He found a rabid mouse. Never before seen before, so the cottony swell of its cheeks obliterated him so. <laughs> Thus he was compelled to carve the David to see better light come onto this world. <laughs> the real secret behind the David was that there was two pieces. There was one half that was chiseled and another half that was chiseled. And inside they stuffed it full of the great goodness of all men. <laughs> Nougat, caramel, peanuts, and chocolate. It was the greatest marvel. It had to be kept away, kept as a secret. <laughs> so they filled the inside of the David, slammed it together, rubber cement and all, and glued it in place forever for the world to marvel at such a thing as a statue. Not knowing, renounced to the idea that the facts were that really the real treasure was hidden deep inside of the belly of the David. <laughs> Stuffed full of the nougat. <laughs> when it rains, God is crying. Metaphorically and metaphysically as well. Which is just true. tell this because when you look into the eyes of a puppy you can see that sad look as if the whole world had come to a collapse and came back and rebounded. <laughs> Did I ever tell you <laughs> of the story <laughs> about a mountain man? <laughs> Portrayed as a mischievous chipmunk he wasn't really a chipmunk, he was a man. <laughs> he found himself in quarrelless fantasy day after day, breaking free from the quarrels of life, as it were. Mistaken as a chipmunk, primarily because of only his indulgence for acorns. <laughs> The Four Tales of Curiosity. The first aligns with an idea from a man from Egypt. <laughs> Tutankhamun was his name, but yet he also went by Ramses II. <laughs> was he a transsexual? We don't know yet today, but at the same time, there was a curious point from it. He found himself constantly staggered, 
wandering back and forth through his temples, wondering what he would build. <laughs> Never found it. And that is what is curious. Curiosity number two. <laughs> How did little Bobby really lose her shape if she had such a long cane? <laughs> The curiosity was is that her dress came back soiled in the blood of something. There was no such thing as DNA evidence at the time, so nobody could test for it. But <laughs> the sheep tender or the owner of those sheep did not trust her after this and put her to work tasking in the end of the in the end of the castle underneath the stairwell where the shatter was. <laughs> Upon this, a small gray man came into her cell and asked her to spin him what else but gold. <laughs> Strange enough as it was, she could not spin it into gold. <laughs> so instead, she picked up her cane, walked out of the castle, and was never heard from again. That is curious. <laughs> Curiosity number three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Curiosity number three. When the Persians were trying to take over the Greek society, they found themselves constantly venturing between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. Yet, they did not know of a place that we now know as North America. Instead, they were traveling to another island, mapped, of course. Archibald Withers have shown me the evidence. <laughs> of course, within that idea, the only thing that could be subjectified from it was the same idea that Ramses II had set forth for, which was the island of knowledge, <laughs> otherwise known today as Atlantis. <laughs> the Persians struggled, strove through the ocean, hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions, <laughs> winding upon the island. They found themselves upon a place that was suspended above the ocean floor. Their <laughs> numbers, great as they were, <laughs> had no other option but to sink the island itself from the masses of weight. <laughs> that is not curious. <laughs> what is curious? How is it that they were able to live under the ocean, suspended but unsuspended? by the same island, while Ramses could not find it. <laughs> Curiosity number four. <laughs> Why would you mix two words known as worm and bat together to create a creature that is a mammal that walks on the ground? <laughs> there is no flying, there is no flutter from that animal. And yet it is so docile. You figure warm, a major impact to the ground, and bat, it flies. But there is no dive on it from this creature. The four curiosities. <laughs> Archibald Withers knew he never shared the secrets. But I still toy. Did I ever tell you of the story of Julius Caesar? <laughs> and his embarking embargo to find new and never before seen land. <laughs> it was a trilogy, it was. Princess Quesadilla of the Spanish Channel was not yet to be free. Christopher Columbus himself decided to embark upon the journey, thrusting himself upon boats, finding the perfect ship, getting to the newer lands. <laughs> it was all within the embargo to build better missile technology, except it had not been done because there was not space within the Spanish court. <laughs> Julius Caesar climbed aboard. Stowaway, locked in the cellar of the ship, eating nothing but rats and plankton. <laughs> Landing themselves in the new land was a different adventure altogether. 
Spanish courts never assumed that Julius Caesar himself had run upon the ship. <laughs> Yet he had been recorded dead, but he had found the secret power. The power of the gods. The luscious brown leaf. <laughs> Only enough tucked away between his cheeks while smuggled away within the boards under the undership. He <laughs> preserved his life, not just by eating, but by savoring, enjoying, delectifying in the lusciousness of the fruit of the gods. Upon landing, upon this new land, which was staggered, beasts, wilderness, and large trees. Strange people of various towns, all offering up the fruit of the gods. <laughs> Julius Caesar whipped out his codfish. Mind you, a real codfish. <laughs> or what was left of it after he ate it. The <laughs> skeleton of his large codfish. <laughs> he hacked through the Anasazi Indians, one at a time, never suspecting their do betrayal by Christopher Columbus himself, <laughs> given blankets infused with cotton candy. <laughs> they all suffered the horrible fate of diabetes, <laughs> dying, eating their own bodies. <laughs> After Julius Caesar escaped from the boats, hacked his way with his codfish through the Anasazi Indians, he made his way west <laughs> to the Upper Rockies area. <laughs> this was another matter altogether. <laughs> but this was the first sighting in 300 years of none other than Alexander Burroughs. <laughs> Julius Caesar grasped him with loving embrace. His new friend yet found again over the history pages of time. <laughs> they both sank below the merry wear, <laughs> traveling to a place known as the springs, the springs of salt and sulfur. Yet they were hot springs, and though, lo and behold, within the caves, the caverns, the rocky mountains, <laughs> traveled west. Julius Caesar and Burroughs himself <laughs> both drank from the fountain of youth. <laughs> Spanish conquests were not found toil. <laughs> Yet Christopher Columbus prevailed nevertheless. <laughs> he saved a great victory over Julius Caesar's conquering of the Aztecs. <laughs> and the Anasazi. <laughs> and because of this, he plundered most of the gold, brought it back to the Spanish court. And Princess <laughs> Quesadilla became a queen. Because of her queenship, she granted Christopher Columbus four children, <laughs> all named of the greatest of the great. <laughs> George Bush, Anheuser Bush. <laughs> Boris Karloff and Robert Hitchcock. <laughs> These four men were destined for great things. <laughs> but that was not a story altogether. <laughs> well, that's good. The misconception people have with the ideas from the Kennedy assassinations, it wasn't because of Kennedy's affairs with Marilyn Monroe. Oh no. <laughs> they labeled her as the whore. And that she was a prostitute, philandering her ways, rolling throughout the shirts of the curtsy in the grass. <laughs> but it was not so. The one really charging for sexual favor was John F. Kennedy. <laughs> Caught in a love affair between Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn Monroe paying him, her photographer was furious. <laughs> That could not be. Upon this, the photographer, James Cameron, <laughs> the 
threw himself at the altar of the gods. <laughs> he burnt the last remake of Bojest, and lo and behold, Thor appeared in front of him. <laughs> Thor and Zeus both skirt the alleyway, rose to the top of the building, throwing a lightning bolt with a single stone attached to the front, and struck John F. Kennedy in the head. That last <laughs> payment, the last remake of Bojest. <laughs> In the days of old, William Burroughs saw this through. He recorded everything. It was a mystery. Nobody knew whether he worked for the Illuminati or a higher power. <laughs> Most suspected a higher power. <laughs> but what higher power was there? John Gotti, not high enough. <laughs> Jim Morrison, still not high enough. <laughs> was Adelphus himself? No. Still. Not within the higher domain. Behold, within what I tell you, the highest of higher powers was what he answered to. Rodney Dangerfield himself. <laughs> there was no higher power. Those days are long gone and over with. Rodney Dangerfield no longer exists anything more than a smashed ladybug. <laughs> little fly swatter. We live in a very curious day. A day of inventions from inventions that have already existed, but they do not exist. Only because people perceive that they want to purposely make things come about the way that they want to see them. <laughs> Lillian Almonte, an English woman of the past, nobody would know, but a noble woman, under Count Borloff. It was his wife she was. And curious enough, the first person to actually use tritium as an actual n night lighting device <laughs> was none other than Nikolai Tesla. In the 17th century, created her personal usage item, her sexual pleasures out of tritium, so that in the dark she could find it and not have any troubles. <laughs> Yet these secrets hidden away by the druids. <laughs> Disheveled movements. A woman would bra would purposely burn their own braziers in the pure enjoyment of knowing that they would have saggy breasts in the future. <laughs> there is no future. But we get away with it. <laughs> A woman by the name of Victoria created under things that were so extravagant women had to buy them. <laughs> and they would never burn them. The magic interlaced in between was none other than sausage. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, my dear. Because it was made out of sausage, the same substance women cooked morning after morning. There was such love and care, devotion added into such an item that would hold up to their pocket purses. That forever. They would keep their under things safe and sacred, not burning them, yet cherishing them, and occasionally giving a neck. 
But these are the days of today. Everything is confusion. Nothing has ever been the same since Eddie Monster died. Leaving behind his legacy, his love for worm foods. Still treasured by the Indians of today. <laughs> Not Native Americans, but the actual Indians themselves from India. <laughs> Yet, the ground or the substance that exists within India itself, the ground plagued by Shiva herself, creates such catastrophe as human anomalies, the bubble man, the man of wood, the man <coughs> made of wood, the bark man, the dog man. All of these people have savored such pleasure as worm foods from India. <laughs> the Dalai Lama himself would not partake. <laughs> Instead, he took his warm foods, smuggled them back to his temple, and burned them as a gilded shrine to Shiva herself. <laughs> this did not please Wobby Dick. <laughs> For the Dalai Lama was blessed by Shiva herself hand in marriage, found herself in the heavenly tones. <laughs> and yet she bore another child, and life continued. <laughs> yet the disturbance was so great, Bill Clinton should have never slept with his secretaries. <laughs> yet this was the child born, the prodigal son, and yet he still made mistakes. caught in drought, never to be seen again. <laughs> this man atoned for his sins. He broke free of the Pentecost. <laughs> he rode across the lands on a solid gold stallion. <laughs> Found himself stuck in the savannah with no one to go. Plenty of water, but not a drop to drink. For fear of it running empty. Yet after the 30th month of his stay, he realized without drinking water, he was still living. <laughs> John Casabani grabbed his gold steed and rode across to the metropolis of New York City. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's fine. The spider attack. No matter. <clears throat> there were tremulous days in the golden age. <laughs> the golden age of man. There was found to be a woman. <laughs> Cleopatra was her name. When she boiled eggs, it was her favorite food. Yet, unknown to her, boiled eggs sitting too long develop odor and <laughs> putrescence. Yet, still eating them, she decided it was the best of ideas to pickle these while still within their putrid state. Since boiling them of their putrid state, it henceforth brought forth an odor so immense from her womb. Ergo, people had no other conclusion to make except for swamp gas or stank, commonly known today. <laughs> the chief counsel of Icarus tried to realign the stars in to where the swamp gas would actually filter its way away from the Egyptian area. Lo and behold, it found its way into the inner city, and Moses took credit, plaguing everyone with the firstborn child dying. <laughs> 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 
That's right. Cerberus, angry, furious. <laughs> With the denotation of the art of the gods. <laughs> Hurled himself down towards the earth at Moses, missing him by a hair. Slamming into the ocean, parting its waves, Moses passed by long enough just for all of his people to pass. Yet in the same, Moses claims his rights again. <laughs> this was not good enough. Cerberus, still angry, halted himself back to Loki, begging, pleading for retribution. Solaris took upon his shoulders this retribution. Flying headfirst from the stars, Loki slams into the earth again, creating two hurricanes of a mass potential <laughs> made of fire. They traveled north by northeast. <laughs> Moses followed them, yet again claiming them as a sign to gods that were not even existent yet. <laughs> Moses, the lightning bolt struck, engraving Brivel that had no context. <laughs> and Moses marched down the hill with two tablets, which he showed his people. Had it not been for the Marx Brothers. <laughs> the 
a substance for Swiss cheese. <laughs> you seem perplexed, son. So I will elaborate how the world was not taken over by Swiss cheese. <laughs> William Burroughs himself rose from the volcano of Greece, <laughs> running faster than wind himself, landed himself in Switzerland, and pulled it from the mainland, separating it. He pulled too hard, separating Sweden, Finland, and Norway, all from the mainland. Nobody could pass, nobody could bypass. The Swiss cheese was milled from the mainland for two decades. <laughs> but upon this time, the French had already started creating brulee. <laughs> so because of brulee, Swiss cheese had no effiance within the public demeanor at this point. <laughs> Set on the back of whales, large casks of cheese riddled over the oceans. <laughs> Wood was sparse in Finland, Norway, and Sweden. <laughs> the saddle was revamped to ride the whale, training the whales for two decades. They finally found their way to be able to transport cheese to the mainland. <laughs> and it was all London. George Clooney and his cream <laughs> <laughs> Masquerading in public appeal, but yet we do not know that they are truly the gods themselves. <laughs> yet they are still hailed as their vengeance for Moses' withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> confronted himself. <laughs> he confirmed it one night upon a perilous card game between InSync and Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Marky Mark pulled up his sleeve and there rose a glove. Pulling upon the glove, they found that it was Michael Jackson's glove. He betted ten pence times nine. <laughs> Yet pulling up the other sleeve, they found a codfish of Julius Caesar. Finding the codfish of Julius Caesar made Charlie Chaplin, a.k.a. Zeus, furious with anger. He rose his mighty cane, pulled it in twain, and found yet his mighty lightning bolt, which he struck Monkey Mark between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and yet the career of Monkey Mark failed at that point. <laughs> Thrust into the societal appeal, hating the moments that he dreaded, becoming worse than a rock star. <laughs> he had now become an actor. <laughs>
days of heroes is now over. The days of heroes is now over because such scary individuals that exist, such as Marilyn Manson, <laughs> the good will not touch him. And with the same which is bad, Marilyn Manson sprang forth with Cerberus himself, <laughs> a new offspring. Sinead O'Connor. Head shaven, walking through the mist. <laughs> <laughs> Between the contending of Gumby, Huggy Bear, and My Little Monster, <laughs> there was no more advertising, especial left for the Rothschilds. They had no other choice but to sell out or sell in, whichever way that you would prefer it. But within that idea, in one fatal swoop, Donald Trump sat down at the table for the discussion paneled them in, and the Rothschilds had to leave with one word, one stream of words, which are fired. <laughs> it was instantaneous. Everybody gasped. Hilary Swank pulled the codfish of Julius Caesar from her dress, pointed it at the Rothschilds, and they left the table. <laughs> Furious with the dismissal of the Rothschilds, foregoing the pleasures of rich fortitude and the excessive nature of vanities. He walked out with the Rothschilds. He was never to be heard from again. <laughs> Yet there was a time accounting. Later, there was a sighting of a China Olympic Games where there was another sighting of William Burroughs popped onto the stage jumping from the rafters <laughs> he threw the javelin so far went back through the roof and he jumped through the hole from which it came <laughs> the crowd amazed Odin himself cheated. Miss Money Penny grew with jealousy. <laughs> Stepped across the table of the board of chairmen, grabbed the penguin's umbrella, walked over to Clint Eastwood, smacked him furiously <laughs> and gassed the rest of the crowd with the umbrella. <laughs> of course, the penguin at this point in time was a drug addict and he filled it with nitrous oxide, so <laughs> the crowd only laughed and cheered out. <laughs> So she leapt from her chair, crossed the stadium, and left the Later, meeting up with the Rothschilds in a devious plan to take back over the fortitude which they had lost from the Trump, declaring them fired. And within this, they found the secret to Swiss cheese from the thought haagen ice cream and Leviathan's fury within a churning barrel. They decided they would go embarking on a great and perilous journey to find Leviathan and quench his thirst for revenge for the Swiss cheese. And yet they are 
are still on this journey, so that is where the story ends. But there is more. <laughs> Much more. Uh -huh. Today is a day of lies. And nobody has yet figured out the truths. William Burroughs knows. But he divulged these truths to me long ago. When John Wilkes Booth took his vengeance for poor writing and bad penmanship on Abraham Lincoln's part, he told me, sitting in the stadium, about the truth. I have not yet figured it out, but right after the instant that Michael Jackson has disappeared, died supposedly, Lady Gaga has sprung forth. Yet they have not figured out that it is no more than a breastial implant that separates the difference between the two. <laughs> Echo the difference for the meat dress. Without meat, Michael Jackson cannot sustain the strain. Within these ideas, we find the ultimate truth. We find the ideas <clears throat> that John Wilkes Booth was the writer for the campaign trail of Abraham Lincoln <laughs> and Ronald Reagan. But that was from a bribe from Aphrodite. <laughs> who is also <laughs> known in Hollywood as Nicole Kidman. <laughs> but the real treasure, it comes from these things, is how John Lennon really married Joseph Stalin to excavate him from the Russian area. <laughs> Named Yoko Ono, plastic surgery was only an experiment. Yet it worked so well. Only his vocal tones could mesmerize the public so well. Such howling dread at he, people had no other choice but to pay attention. <laughs> Yet the one thing they never show within the videos is how the crowd actually dies from the howling sounds of <laughs> Joseph Stalin, also known as <laughs> Yet there will come a day I know because I have seen ages of time. There will yet to become a day where William Burroughs will find himself back on this earth and rescue us from the howls, the screams, the torment of <laughs> Stalin. no video. It was a solitary mistake. One night of frivolous passion and too much vodka was stolen. <laughs> and Lenin had asked for a midnight lullaby. His ears bled. His eyes fell from his face. And he died with a grin that has never yet been seen on this earth. story mainly because Edgar Allan Poe was there so he wrote a story about it twisting the truth putting somebody underneath the floorboards it's not there. Peter Jennings into this world from Davy Jones's locker, from the belly of the beast itself. <laughs> 
belly of the beast. The belly of the beast can be known as none other than Loki's pet cat living in Hades itself, known as Tootsie. <laughs> Ravenous beast, sharp claws, tender meows, <laughs> <laughs> and vanquished stares of love and affection. <laughs> Yet from the belly came Peter Jennings, and Peter Jennings whistled his way into our hearts night after night with his constant dribble. <laughs> <laughs> Yet such are the bays. We found ourselves in ancient African prairies. This cat originated from the dust that was swept from Tutan Common's feet. <laughs> he dusted his feet one evening. And Orion gave its blessing. <laughs> Out forth sprung a cat, and Leo named it its daughter. Orion. Contemplated mass mayhem, so instead, knowing the fate that Peter Jennings would once be frozen again out of the ashes, as he once ruled the Aztec tribes, he put forth a perilous plan. The plan was to watch him be annihilated. But how do you annihilate something as precious as Peter Jennings from Tootsie? So he created the most marvelous man ever met before, betwixt women's eyes, hearts falling, everything asunder, fire in the eyes of women. His name was Brad Pitt, the only son, the new Hercules of Zeus himself, Charlie Chaplin, made it with the sands of time, bringing forth a new age, fire leaping from his eyes, and out forth plummeted Brad Pitt into the ocean of the saltwater wherry. Pitt himself grabbed hold of the Memogoynin, <laughs> the machine of ultimate fortune, found himself betwixt in love with Artemis herself, himself, wrapped in Julia, Angelina Jolie, sorry, her form, and yet found himself with more children than he could stomach. <laughs> Loki set this into toil, yet at the same time, this is how the plan failed. <laughs> the madness of too many children. <laughs> Between the hearts of the pure, for so many children, Brad Pitt himself lost his immortality and now finds himself a gray man. <laughs> by eating cake. <laughs> this is all a sound adventure. Yet a horror story within its own time. 
yet changing his name many years after we have found Saint Nicholas of Carpathia, also known as Count Dracula, himself sitting in the White House today, Barack Obama, <laughs> lost of his red robes, lost of the bloodlust, yet he still sits, drinking tea and eating his cake. <laughs> This also gives us the explanation for why the deficit has not been concluded because he is too busy eating his cake. The dreaming of Marie Antoinette and another day. Yet she was no goddess, so he will never see the end to it. <laughs> Or no one of any mystery. Truthfully, what they really are is all truths. Everything you see is a truth. The <laughs> bogeyman, ghosts, witches, coca pelli, trolls. <laughs> they are all true within existence. We fail to let ourselves see them, so they cannot be true. <laughs> If we look harder, we find the trolls within our society. Jack Black himself rose from the cottonwood tree. <laughs> Raised by wood bark and thistle milk. <laughs> Learned to play the vines. The poison ivy. And upon that venture, rose forth playing a guitar, already learning the poison ivy, and became a star. Yet, no more than a troll in today's modern society. <laughs> and we fail to see it. But William Burroughs will have his vengeance. He will rise one day. For he has traded for the fountain of youth. He will forever live with us. Selling your soul at crossroads to Loki is too easy. It is founded with a constructed and very dynamic plan, the crossroads, next to the continent tree. Such a putrid thing is the continent tree. Anything could spring forth. Hellhounds. Adam Sandler. Yet. There are days of old and days of new, which we find ourselves ever more growing curious. There were a time when we could find ourselves a course of real men, free men. <laughs> we are no longer free. Finding ourselves slaves to cheese, cream brulee, beer. Stalin. find a way to break our bonds. Perseus is long dead. We have no hero. But who, who can we count on to actually run forth and subdue the gods into creating a new masterpiece? The first attempt has already failed. ourselves in hell with Marilyn Manson and Lady Gaga <laughs> is unholy seed. Also known as Michael Jackson. <laughs> of course there was another predecessor that had regained its strength throughout the ages and yet failed to attempt to bring down the beast himself. Because of failing to bring down the beast, we now find ourselves lost without the double mint twins. <laughs> there was a day when fire was first brought to us by the Pepsi Company. 
an age of stone and a moon. This day would be ravaged instantaneously, splitting heaven and earth and time itself. John Candy has been with us through all of the ages. For we do not know it, but he is the right hand man, the predecessor, the legionnaire of Julius Caesar, <laughs> the offspring of Julius Caesar and William Burroughs. <laughs> John Candy will be back. The prodigal son will return to us. <laughs> and he will slather us with bacon and good gifts. And probably Canadian donuts, too. But I am okay with this. I apologize, but we must pause here and end this chronicle of the story for the journeys of change. But stay with us and be attentive for the next time that we will have the epics of days past and you will hear more of the days of the gods.